In this video, I'm going to talk through how I created this grungy effect in this scene of my low poly wasteland. If you'd like a detailed breakdown of the scene, then let me know in the comments below. Okay, so my scene has a fairly nice kind of richness to it. It's very high contrast, a look that not everybody loves, but I really quite like it. This is using cycles, but you probably could get fairly close with Eevee using the same techniques. And I'll show you how I've done it. So I'll bring up the shader editor and I'll just zoom out my scene slightly. And the scene has no extra lighting. It's only got this HDRI in it. I'll show you the HDRI I'm using. So nothing particularly special about it. And that's from Polyhaven called Construction Yard. And it's only a 2K texture. You don't have to go massively over the top and get 8K HDRIs. What I've done is plugged it into an RGB curves node. So if I click on the node and press M to mute it, you can see that's just adding a little bit of red. So I've got the red channel here and I've been playing with it a little bit, maybe boosting the shadows and slightly bringing in the highlights. And again, if I mute this, you can see it goes a bit dull and then it's got this sort of warmth and richness to it. Now it's worth noting that my strength of the HDRI is at 1.5. So it's quite high. And there's a reason for that because I'm using lots of ambient occlusion and multiply nodes. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I've rearranged the shader editor to make it easier to understand. And now I'm looking at the objects material. So this is the one material I'm using for almost every single object. So you can see if I click on each of these, it's the same material. I'll just very briefly show you that if I go to UV editing, here is the texture that I'm using. And if I zoom into this object here, press L for the linked object, because this is all one object, so I can move things around easily. You can see it's all unwrapped on this one square, giving it that brownish color. So if I deselect that and go to the roof, you can see that's all unwrapped on this one color square here. And I've done that with every single object. So it's quite efficient. It's using one texture, but all the faces of different objects are mapped to different colors. So back to the shading workspace. So the one texture is plugged in here and I've mixed it with a mix node here with an ambient occlusion node. Now with the node wrangler add-on installed, if I press control shift and left click, you can see exactly what that node looks like. So I've gone massively over the top on the ambient occlusion here. So I've got an ambient occlusion node there. If I control left click, and show you what that looks like. That creates extra shadow in the crevices. I've put that through into a color ramp to really boost it. So pulled up those blacks an awful lot and brought down the white so it doesn't make everything too dark, although it does a little bit. And then it goes into this mix shader. And I've set the mix shader rather than just mix, which would look like this, rather odd. I've set it to soft light. And that gives us this result for the color. It's sort of a bit of a painterly look, I suppose. And of course you can change the factor in terms of the influence of this ambient occlusion here. So that's the soft light node. And then on top of that, I've mixed it with a very similar ambient occlusion setup here. So again, there's the ambient occlusion as it was before into the color ramp, a little bit different, but much the same. And then into a multiply node. So that makes all these areas a lot darker. So that makes what we have here a lot darker here. And then with the principal BSDF, we get this sort of richness to the shadows. And again, I can play with the factor here to make it more sort of muddy or less so. Apart from that, there's nothing else that's special about this material. I've put the roughness right up to give it a sort of sandy, muddy look. The only different object in there is the rubbish bags and they've got the same setup, but they've just got less roughness. So they're a tiny bit more shiny. So to achieve the look, it's mainly down to the soft light, giving us this interesting color overlay and then the multiply giving us those nice rich colors. So I would encourage you to use the ambient occlusion node with a color ramp and try out the different blending modes in the mix shader. I'm still experimenting with these techniques, so I'd love to see any results that you come up with. So make sure you share them with me. Have fun and I'll see you next time.